Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to go briefly into the uh, temple and how it was always the most highs. All right. Um, intent. All right. To uh, build a tabernacle on earth. All right. Or a temple on earth where he dwelt directly. All right. And um, in these times. We don't have a physical temple now going back to Moses. All right. I'm not going to read this. But um, if you want to get the understanding on the first tabernacle that was built, all right, by a man on earth, um, you will go here to Moses, okay, in Exodus, the 25th chapter, okay, he built this temple, okay, and um, if you look, you know, um, the, the high priest would wear the breastplate with the ephod, with the 12 stones, um, you would have the Ark of the Covenant. Um, you would have the mercy seat, okay, uh, here, which is all symbolic of Yahweh Shai when you, um, get to the nitty gritty, but, um, I'm not going to get into all of that today, but here, when you read this in Exodus 25 and 17, it says, and thou shalt take, uh, make a mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth thereof, and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work. And thou shalt make them in the two ends of mercy. Okay. And remember when Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, rose in the tomb, there were two angels, um, you know, and with him in the middle, which this is all symbolic of Yahweh Shai. All right. He is our mercy seat. All right. He is um, our mediator and high priest. All right. But the Levitical priest, after the order of Aaron, um, would go and do the duties within this tabernacle. Okay, and then Solomon built the temple. We'll get to that. But let me keep reading. It says, And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work, and thou shalt make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, and thou shalt make one cherub on the end and the other of the cherubim on the end. All right, and as you uh, read down in verse 21, it says, And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. All right, so the, 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 the priest would go here, all right, to commune directly with the Most High through the mercy seat, and there would be a testimony given, okay? There would be a testimony given, all right? He would have to have on the ephod. He would have to have cleansed himself, and there was a lot of technicalities, all right? And there would be a testimony given unto him. And verse 22, it says, And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, all right? <laughs> and from between the two cherubims, all right, which is symbolic of Yahweh Shai, all right, it is Yahweh Shai, okay, we have various scriptures to prove that, and it says, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all the things which I uh, will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So the high priest would go into this tabernacle, all right, into the Holy of Holies where the ark of the covenant was, and they would get a testimony. All right, that they should go out and then teach the Israelites and tell the Israelites what the Heavenly Father desired. Okay, this was in a physical tabernacle built by Moses. All right, and when you go down to the very end, all right, Exodus 25 and 40, it says, And look that thou make of them after the pattern which was showed unto thee in the mount. Now, if you know the story, Moses uh, went up to the mount. Okay, and there was a big chariot hovering over the mount. Okay, and ultimately the Heavenly Father gave him the Torah. That's where we get the first five books. All right, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All right, um, Moses, and I'm sure he has some scribes write down some things as well. Um, you know, gave us the Torah, you know, our legacy, you know. And when he was looking up, you know, he saw the actual of holy and ho of holies in the heavens. So the tabernacle that he made on earth was based upon what was in the heavens, what he saw on that chariot. All right. Which that's the true tabernacle, 
all right, in which we should be boasted in. Now, Solomon, okay, um, when you read about David and Solomon, it was David's mind to build a temple and tabernacle, all right, where, you know, the presence of the Lord dwelt. But the Heavenly Father sent Nathan the prophet to David to say, no, okay, you uh, you can't build the temple. Your son Solomon will have to build it. Now, when you read it, this is uh, First Chronicles 28 and 2. It says, then David the king stood up on his feet and said, hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had it in my heart to build a house for the rest of the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh and the Ark of the Covenant, okay, uh, in these days is no longer needed, okay, and that's in the book of uh, Jeremiah, the, the third chapter, okay, we, we, we no longer have a physical temple, and we'll get to that in just a minute, because we are the temple, okay, and uh, Yahweh is, 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 the, is that, that Ark of the Covenant, okay, we're under grace fighting to get into this new covenant, but it says, and build a uh, house of rest for the Ark of the Covenant, okay, of Yahweh, and for the footstool of our God, and have made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war. He had too much blood in his hand, so he needed mercy. And him, the mercy was through his son Solomon, who forwarded, who built that uh, uh, tabernacle, that temple, and forwarded David's throne, all 12 tribes, you know, united together for a period of 40 years. All right. For that has been a man of war and I shed blood. All right. It says, how be it, Yahweh, God of Israel, have chosen me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he have chosen Judah to be the ruler <laughs> and of the house of Judah. The house of my father and among the sons of my father, he like me uh, to make me king over all Israel. And of my sons, for the Lord have given me many sons, he have chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Now, within this uh, throne, there was a temple. OK, and when you read here and he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. All right. And when you read down, uh, let's see here. Verse 10, Just you can read these things on your own. I don't want to go too far into it. Because I want to make a point how we are now the temple. Okay. All 12 tribes now have access uh, for temple duties as we go out. And preach this word, but I'll, I'll bring it out in just a minute. It says, take heed now for the Lord have chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary and be strong and do it. Then David uh, gave Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch. All right. And of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof and of the inner uh, palace thereof and of the uh, place of the mercy seat and the pattern of of all that he had by the spirit. So this is the same pattern that Moses received in Leviticus or Exodus, the 25th chapter, right? So now David gives Solomon that pattern on how to build a temple. Okay. And what did the temple represent? It represented the direct dwelling and presence of the most high. All right. Where his law goes forth, the order of the most high going forth in the earth. All right. With all 12 tribes, OK, uh, uh, with David being a king, but who forwarded that 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 throne for 40 years? It was Solomon, because remember, David had too much blood on his hand. All right. And when you read, it says. Um, so with this temple, as you read and the pattern, all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord and of the chambers and all of the chambers round about and the, the treasuries of the house of God and of the treasuries of the dedicated things. Also for the course of the priest and Levites. OK, so within this temple, there were particular duties, only the priest and the Levites. All right. And for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord and for all the vessels of the service of the house of the Lord. All right. So when you read. All right. Uh, there's various duties of the Levite priest within this temple that only they could do. So now, you know, as the Lord says, he dwelleth not in temples. 
because you had a lot of people boasting in this temple. All right. Now, um, let's get this real quick. This is uh, Acts 7 and, and 48. Howbeit the boast high dwelleth not in temples made with hands. All right. So those 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 physical tabernacles and those earthly temples and tabernacles were only a uh, symbolism of what the heavenly father. All right. Plan on doing with his people dwelling in them and not just a physical temple. Now, at the time of Yahweh, of course, the temple still stood that Solomon built. All right. But eventually it was sacked in 70 AD by the Romans, the Edomites. OK. And we haven't had a physical temple since then. All right. Because that temple was where ultimately uh, you would uh, uh, have commune with the most high through those Levitical priests. But then here comes Yahweh on the scene and he's saying, no, the, 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 the commune of the most high goes through me. All right. Of uh, the forgiveness of sins. All right. Uh, uh, the, the maimed and halted can now be brought in and cleansed and all of these various different things. Right. And you had a lot of those high and mighty high priest. OK. And scribes, Pharisees and so forth. Those of the circumcision who rejected Yahweh Shai's authority. All right. Now, when Yahweh Shai died on the cross. All right. Remember, uh, uh, I believe it's Matthew um, 27. OK. And I'm just going through this briefly. You know, you have to read these things on your own. Um and, and get acquainted with them. Uh, I believe it's uh, Matthew 27. Okay. In 51. Now when Yahweh Shai. Yielded up the ghosts on the cross. Okay. Which you know he was uh, for a period of. After three days when he was buried he rose. All right. No high priest after the order of Aaron did what this high priest did. But when he died and yielded up the ghosts, What happened here? All right. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Now, the veil represented, OK, where only the high priest could go in particular points of the and, and do what uh, a commune at that mercy seat where that, uh, you know, the Ark of the Covenant was right. But only the Levitical priest could do that under that in that temple in that tabernacle. Right. But now that the veil is rent, this gives access to all 12 tribes. All right. Which Moses himself said it a nation of priests. OK. A nation of priests. Uh, let's see here. Really quick. Yep. This is uh, Exodus 19 and six. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. All right. And in holy nation, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So so though the Levitical priesthood was very, very uh, beautiful. All right. We failed. All right. That that priesthood even failed. OK, now. That now that the, 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 the physical temple was destroyed. Right. It was destroyed. All right. And I'm going through a whole lot in a little time. So. Of course, there's particular things you're going to have to look up on your own. All right. And any questions, you know, Lord, whether we can deal with them. But <clears throat> under this uh, grace period we have. Right. Let's get this in the book of uh, first Peter's chapter two. And I start at uh, four. It says. Uh, to who to to whom coming unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious talking about Yahweh Shai. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. See that? So there is a spiritual temple being built. All right. Where all 12 tribes now have access. All right. With the most high through Yahweh Shai. We no longer have to go to that physical temple. That was only a, a symbolism of what the heavenly father wanted to do and what the Levites did was only a symbolism of what Yahweh would do for us and what is that to be an intercessor okay and to send us what the testimony that we should go out and preach and tell the Israelites so now under this grace period entered into this new covenant is not just the Levitical priest 
that have that uh, office. And let's just keep going so I can explain myself. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shahamashiach. So what you have happening is, you know, carnal men are trying to bring the technicalities of that Levitical priesthood into the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, which they're making a fool of themselves. All right, because there's no reason of boasting. All right. Now, it says, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. So the sacrifice is not done away with. Okay. Yahweh Shai's sacrifice did fill the void. What's done away with is us having to go to the high priest and offer up and have animal sacrifice offered up to us. And David himself gives us that understanding. Right. This is the book of Psalms, the 51st chapter. All right. And I'll just jump to the point. This is David after he was rebuked by Nathan, the prophet for those those wicked deeds he did in which he needed mercy. All right. This is uh, Psalms chapter 51. In 17, the sacrifice I started uh, 16, it says, for thou desirest not sacrifice else I would give it. See that? Else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. All right. Which is what the high priest, the, the Levitical priest after the order of Aaron did. Okay. To bring you back in good graces with the most high. So here's David. What is he saying? For thou desirest not sacrifice. Else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Right. <laughs> which Israel ran that system through the ground. The Lord, it got to the point where he, he said, I'm, I hate your, your burnt offerings. I despise them. Okay. The sacrifices of the most high are a broken spirit. Okay. Obedience, man. And a broken and contrite heart. Oh, God, thou will not despise. So now the sacrifice is ultimately repentance. Okay. And making your body a living sacrifice for the spiritual temple. OK, in which you do the duties of a priest by doing what? Prophesying. And we'll get to that teaching. All right. You, uh, 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 the apostles. OK, that fulfills the duty of the priesthood. All right. In commune with the most high through his mercy seat in the heavens through sending you down the Holy Spirit. And we'll get to that in just a minute. OK, so let's jump to the book of Psalms 69. OK, get a few precepts to expound upon that point. Psalm 69. All right, we're going to jump to 30. It says, and I will praise the name of God with a song. And we're singing a new song. All right, which this new song is given directly from the spiritual realm. All right, remember when you read Revelation, the fifth chapter, the high priest in the heavens unloosed the seals. There was no Levitical priest who did that. Okay, so it's really nothing to boast about. All right, we're all fighting for the same thing. And we're all a holy uh, a, a priesthood. Okay the elect those who are in the right spirit so i will praise the name of god with a song all right and as we go out and preach this new song let's get psalms 40 and 3 real quick all right the the, the prophets and apostles all right that are set up all right are a fulfillment of the spiritual temple all right and that's pretty much the duty of a priest teaching our people the laws tell them to come back to the heavenly father prophesying which is far more important prophesying OK, uh, pre preaching unto them the fear of the Lord. OK, come back to the heavenly father, because this is what's going to happen. All right. Now, when you get Psalms 40 and three, it says, and they have put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and so trust in the Lord. All right. Because we're giving him the testimony that was sent from on high. All right. Psalm 69 and 31. This also shall please Yahweh better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hoofs. So you still have men boasting in the sacrificial system. All right. Uh, uh, you know, they even go to Paul who, who offered up a sacrifice because he was snatched up by the circumcision. 
and they made him offer up a sacrifice to prove he wasn't against the laws. <laughs> All right. But that sacrifice didn't uh, uh, um, bring us eternal life. Or it was merely just him sacrificing a, a lamb or whatever particular animal was required. All right. I believe it has something to do with a uh, someone who broke a uh, oath of a uh, of a um, I forget that uh, what what happened. But Lord willing, we'll get into that you know later. Um, Nazarite vow. All right. But anyway, let's go to the book of uh, Sirach. The uh, or Hebrews rather, Hebrews thirteen. Okay, Hebrews thirteen and fifteen. Okay, it says, "By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto our God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto His name." See that the fruit of our lips, as we're out here preaching. All right, prophesying, that is a sacrifice. So it's, it's not that the sacrifice is done under Yahawashai. The sacrificial system is done as far as us having to go up because he was the perfect sacrifice. But we have to make our bodies a living sacrifice for the purpose of building this new temple. All right, which is technically the duty of a priest. Now, let's get the book of Sirach 39. All right, give me one second. Sirach 39. All right, Sirach 39, maybe 14, I think. Yep. I'll start at 14. Get, and give ye a sweet savor as frankincense, because frankincense was also a uh, part of the sacrificial duty in the the the. the you know, the, the priest after the order of Aaron, they would have to offer up sacrifice in the temple daily at particular times. It's a very, very tedious process, man. So Yahweh Shai, you know, his sacrifice, man, call Haloi Yahweh Bashim Shai, because if we were held to the standards of that first covenant, we'd be out of there, man. So now you just walk in the spirit and do the work, okay? The Heavenly Father will take care of the rest. It says, and give ye a sweet savor as frankincense and flourish as a lily, all right? Send forth a smell, all right? Because us, you know, praying, you know, doing the work, that's likened unto a sweet savor being offered unto the Most High through Yahweh Shai, man, who makes intercession for us. And sing a song of praise. Bless the Lord in all his works. Magnify his name and show forth his praise with the songs of your lips and with harps. And in praising him, ye shall say after this manner, all the works of the Lord are good. Whatsoever he commanded shall be accomplished in due season. OK, so this is the duty of those who go out and preach and prophesy the apostles and prophets, man. All right. Which is what which is likened unto a sacrifice, man. OK, one more. Let's get Sirach, the 35th chapter. OK, Sirach, the 35th chapter. Let's see here. And one, he that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough, and he that taketh heed to the commandment offering offereth a peace offering. All right, as we've repented in his latter days, that's likened unto a peace offering. We're making our bodies a living sacrifice by cutting off the deeds of evil, cutting off the deeds of the flesh. Okay? Repenting, praying, fasting, doing all of these things to get back in good graces and peace with our Father, man, through Yahweh Shai. He that requited a good turn, offer it fine flour. So it's your, your the, the faith without works is dead. Okay. And he that giveth alms, sacrificeth praise. Okay. So the things you do amongst the brotherhood. And even Yahweh said that. All right. You, you give a prophet a cup of water, you get a prophet's reward. Okay. As you do unto uh, the least of my brethren, you do unto me. So your works amongst the brotherhood, going out to the highways and the byways, teaching Israel to do what's right, it's off, it's, a, it's likening to an offering, all right, which you don't have to be from the line of Levi or Aaron to do these things now because the temple veil was rent, granting that authority through Yahawashai to all 12 tribes, all right? It says to depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord and to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation, all of these things, peace offering, 
uh, 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 you know, um, the fine flower propitiation. That would all be done through a, a, a high priest of after the order of Aaron, man. Thou shall not appear empty before the Lord. OK, it says for all these things are done because of the commandment, the offering of the righteous, make it the altar fat. And the sweet savor thereof is before the most high. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable in the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Okay, so that is fulfilled in what? Let's get Romans the 12th chapter. Okay. And one, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, which is your reasonable service. Now, going back to where we were, okay, in uh, uh, Peter, okay, let's see here, First Peter 2, all right, let's read it again. First Peter 2 and 5, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and an holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the most high by Yahweh Shai, wherefore it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, the high priest, okay, the bishop of our souls, man, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, all right? So we are a spiritual house, okay? We are a spiritual house. Now, when you jump down to verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, in holy nation, see, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but we receive what? The mercies of David. Okay. <laughs> but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, the Gentiles, but now have obtained mercy. Okay. So now see where we're going to go here. This is 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. And yes, there are a lot of other precepts we can get, but I'm just hitting these points for the purpose of, uh, you know, they're just getting to the, the, the edification, man. All right. 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. For we are labors together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. See that? Ye are God's building. Right? <laughs> so the elect are building a spiritual temple, all right, to where we can all offer up sacrifices unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter, okay? Ephesians 2 and 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in Yahweh, in the Lord, in whom ye are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So what the Heavenly Father sought to do with the tabernacle, with the temple, he's doing it now with men, all right? Which is why it says in Revelation 21, the tabernacle of God is now with men, all right? And Lord willing, we'll get to that. Either in this lesson or I may just do a separate lesson. Okay. Now, Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Okay. And I'll start at uh, four. There is one body and one spirit as ye are called in one hope for your of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. OK, and that was the Lord's uh, purpose from the get go to dwell in his people. But what messed it all up? The flesh. Right. So he's made a better promise within this new covenant that he's going to give us new bodies. OK, but right now we're in a grace period where the Holy Spirit is entering into us. OK, so that we can offer up those sacrifices, which is building that spiritual tabernacle. OK, and we no longer have to just it's not just about Levi. All right. Now, the the Levites were very, very precious uh, uh, in that first covenant, and they're very precious now. All 12 tribes are very precious. All right. Will the sons of Aaron in the kingdom of heaven 
have a, uh, a, a, a great lot? Absolutely. All 12 tribes will be, will be priests, though, after the order of Melchizedek. So the boasting part of it really has no merit at this point. All right? Because just like these priests, real quick, in the book of, of Ezra, the second chapter, all right, these sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, all right, but were not found. Therefore, were they as polluted from the priesthood? You can't prove by genealogy you're of that particular line. Okay, so that's why in the book of Titus, in the book of Timothy, it says avoid these these foolish uh, uh, genealogies and, and strivings about the law and the and the you know the technicalities under that first covenant for the high priest and the priest and all of this. It's vain and unprofitable because now we're building a spiritual temple. Okay, where we're all offering up sacrifices, man. Right? Now, how do we do that? Let's read it. <laughs> See? Verse 7, but unto every one of us, of all 12 tribes, okay? This, this letter ain't just to the Levites. Let's read Ephesians 1. See who this was to. And these were th th these were uh, 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 Israelites among these nations who were coming out of Greco-Roman customs, man. Ephesians one and one, Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Hamashiach. All right, now reading this in the NLT, we'll give you a little bit more clarification, which the King James is the best, you know, translation. Don't get it twisted. All right, but we go to the NLT just to read things because the old English can get technical, uh, I mean, it can get difficulty at times, all right? NLT, this letter is from Paul to the uh, uh, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Yahawashai, Hamashiach. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Yahawashai, uh, Hamashiach. So these were, were, were serious converts who, 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 ultimately repented from those idols and we're now building a church so as we go to the fourth chapter again this this all of this is written to us all james what it was james one and one to the 12 tribes who were scattered abroad greetings we all now have that access and here's how we get that access let's read it again ephesians 4 and 7 but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of of the gift of Hamashiach. All right? So we all have a gift. All right? And you would bring gifts to the altar at times, man. All right? To, to, for the purpose of the temple. Okay? It says well, some have more to give. All right? Some have less to give. But ultimately, we all have our measure, okay, according to the gift that Hamashiach has given us, the high priest in the heavens. And here's the point, man. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, all right, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So now, as we're in this decrepit flesh, in this wicked kingdom, we're able to now overcome death through the Holy Spirit being sent from on high. Okay, so we can go out and preach and prophesy and build up the elect. Okay, but, but how did that happen? That happened from a priesthood that is in the heavens. You see, he ascended up on high and led captivity captive. No son of Levi did that. This is all we're saying. Okay. It says, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He had to come onto the earth, right, and be a sacrifice. He had to go onto the cross in order for that veil to be rent. Okay. Uh, 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 you know, he, he was put. Uh, he died, but then he rose after three days, all right, broke bread with uh, particular men and women of the nation of Israel for 40 days and 40 nights, and then he ascended back into the heavens, and now he's on the right-hand side acting as intercessor and high priest for the elect, which will bring glory to the whole nation when it's all said and done, okay? So he had to come onto the earth first, all right, and be a sacrifice, man. 
to go through his course, what was written. It says, he that descended is the same that had also ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. See, this is why it says, all right, uh, 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 what if, 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 if the Levitical priesthood brought perfection, what need was there for another priest to be spoken of? Okay, because when you get Hebrews, all right, the word of God, okay, which quotes the, the Old Testament, I believe, 38 times. Get Hebrews 5 and 1 or 4. Let's see if it's 4. Let's see, maybe 6. See, maybe 9 is what I'm looking for. Salakia. Well, well, let's read this. Hebrews 8 and 1. Now of the things which you have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. See, the things that we had on earth were merely just a, a token, a sign of what was to come, of what's already in the heavens. See, the true tabernacle is in the heavens. That's what's going to be established on earth. Okay? Which the Lord pitched in not man. You see? For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts. And sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. You see? So you can read this chapter. Let's keep going. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest. See, he's in the heavens, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts after the law. See, it would just be, a, he would just be, a, you know, he wouldn't be a, Why? Because he's of Judah. Right? It says, because the, the, the priest under that covenant came from Levi, in particular the, the sons of Aaron too. It says, who serve into the example of a shadow of heavenly things as Moses, Moses was admonished of the Most High when he was about to make the tabernacle. All right, for see said he that thou make all things according to the pattern showed unto thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. This is not the word of God. See, that Pepsi and that Taco Bell and that Top Ramen and that, 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 that diet of yours is blocking you from the understanding, man, which we all have our folly in our diet. But you on camera eating church, Kentucky Fried Chicken and Taco Bell and drinking Pepsi. That's low level food, man. That should be you should eat you should hide and eat that. That should be your little, you know, your 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 secret bug out, you know, days where you just drive, man, I want some goddamn Taco Bell. You but you don't put it on camera for Israel to see, man. But anyway. Anyway. Let's see what chapter nine. I was trying to find something else. Here we go. The old and the new, all right? See, it's referencing Exodus, the 25th chapter, which we read where Moses was given a command to build that first tabernacle, all right? David gave to Solomon that same blueprint to build the temple, which there were stones. It was all sorts of things involved, man. Now, where are those stones? <laughs> Hebrews 9 and 1. When verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. See? A worldly sanctuary, for there was a tap for there was a tabernacle made the first when was the candlestick, the table, the shoe bread, and which is called the sanctuary. All right. Now remember Melchizedek had bread and wine and all of these things? Because he was a priest of the most high God before there was a Levite. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, that was rent. See, because only the sons of Aaron of the tribe of Levi could go in, into that holy of holies, man. See, and you can read this. Let's see here. Verse 10, which stood only in meat and drinks and diverse washings. And carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation, which is through Yahweh, but Hamashiach, all right, 
being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. See, the tabernacle of God is with men that will be the elect perfected with the laws and instructions written in them. We won't need a physical temple. We are the temple. OK, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building, neither by the bloods of, of goats, calves. OK, but by his own blood into he wants into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of goats and bulls, which is the Levitical the sons of Aaron, that's what they did. And the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of a Mashiach who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot unto God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of a new covenant, a new covenant. That by the means of death for the redemption of the transgressions of uh, that were under the first testament. Now, whose transgressions were under that first testament, that first covenant, the Israelites. So this new covenant is to redeem us back to the father contrary. All right. Uh, 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 to the way we were redeemed back under that first covenant, which was by goats, bulls. All right, turtle doves in particular uh, uh, offerings made by those high priests. All right, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance, which is the land of Abraham, Isaac, that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man, and his 12 sons. All right, now let's go back to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. So. Verse 10, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. He's on the right hand side. OK, and, and, and this is the point. These are the gifts. This is technically the priesthood right here. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. See, you, what you don't understand is that this fulfills the spiritual temple. Where now our people can just come to listen to any brother who has the Holy Spirit on him. Okay? And 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 and, and through listening to them, they repent and they get closer to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And ultimately the, the goal is mercy. The goal is 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 to grow in the grace and glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, man. Not to boast in your particular tribe and, and temple duty and all of these things. No. There's no need for that. See, because there's various uh, 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 high level men who could have boasted and they didn't do that. Yahweh Shai himself. So he gave some apostles. These are the gifts that he sent from on high into the minds of the men of the Lord to go out and sing the new song. He gave some uh, apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach. You see that? So that's what the, the, what the priest would do. Go into the Holy of Holies, get the testimony. We now do through the Heavenly Father sending down the Holy Spirit and setting up apostles, prophets, and evangelists, and pastors and teachers. You notice it didn't say high priest and priest, but this is the holy priesthood that are offering up spiritual sacrifices and what are they doing what do they get these gifts to do boast no for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of hamashiach that's the the, the the spiritual temple the spiritual building that is being built in these latter days as we just read okay a building fitly framed together ephesians 2 and 21 all right unto a holy temple in the lord okay and this is where <laughs> when we're beamed up, you get Revelation, the 21st chapter, man. All right. Revelation, the 21st chapter. And what does it say? The tabernacle of God is with men. This is when the law, statutes, and commandments is written in our inward part, man. All right. And we're at one with our power. No more flesh, spiritual bodies. Okay. No more death. No more being subject to sin. 
All right. Therefore, we will never go down as a nation again. Because we will be perfect forever. All right. So, Lord willing, maybe I'll go into Revelation 21 um, if the spirit jumps on me. But hopefully I'll edify on to the next. Shalom.